All right, so this part, we're moving on to the puppets and we're gonna make some props also. Hi everybody, nice little reveal of the stage. We've painted everything just about. Just got the wonderful trees. We moved those up front, I'm sorry, downstage for, uh, I, they're a lot more important. So I wanted to bring them downstage so we could see those up close. Um, so back here, we got the ground row added some sticks from outside, painted all the trees, nice little detail in that. Just remember, you don't need much detail on the upstage part. To give it that depth, you want a little more detail up front and where the puppets will be. So they give that like way in the back in the forest. We added a backdrop here also to add a little texture to the uh, to the trees in the background in the forest for the trees back here. <laughs> so we're going to talk about sight lines. Now sight lines mean what you can see on stage and you don't want to see what's off stage. So in our flats and our wagons that we're going to bring in, so we're going to see when they begin to get seen and when they're not. So for all the way on, your angles of your sight line through this camera here, you can only see a certain area. All right. So now we're going to take these off stage and make sure that they're not seen. So if you can see them that way, that makes sense. So there you go. Now, sometimes we'll be in a different place in a forest and we'll come off with these and come back on in a different area. So now we're in a different location of the forest. So we don't want to see the back edge of that. So that's really neat. <laughs> so, okay, let's take these off. And now we're off to make some more puppets. We've been talking about this for a little while and wondering what the story is going to be about. Now it's the forest for the trees. So we were thinking a little bit of an adventure, a little bit of exploration, that sort of thing. So we have Theodore, who's the young person that is going to venture into the forest. And he is looking for Trepius, a wise and gentle tree person. We're working all that out. Since we're developing this as we go along, it's really fun to do it with other people um, to come up with different ideas and what happens in the forest and this sort of thing. We were coming up with different ideas. And in the props, all right, we have made, uh, at one point, Theodore meets up with Trepius, and they sit around a little fire. Isn't that neat? So we have to put a stick on there, so it's almost like the wagons that comes in on stage, and they sit by that. We already have Trepius. Now, we've changed the stick that's going to direct him I put it through the top so we can come down to the theater and come in because if I come in from the side I, I can't uh, get very much movement so in the top it's almost like a marionette style but I can get a lot more movement out of there you just have to watch out for the battens and stuff that you have on stage we have the tree goblin 
So <laughs> we've um, glued on some weed sticks that we got out in the yard and some leaves. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, but in the forest, there's some other things in there also. So we want to make some birds that maybe fly by because this is uh, Theodore's first time in a forest. Let's make a couple birds, draw a couple things uh, and cut it out. And I'm using the thin cardstock and it's the scraps um, from all the other cutouts. So hang on to that stuff. I have large piles of it off the thing that you can see in here. And I'm using them with colored markers. Uh, a lot of the painting that we did on the set was done by markers, it's acrylic paints, and it seemed to work really well. Whatever you have at home, if you have some fabric or um, a different color fabric, you can use that to, to glue on to your scenery. So Orville and I worked on this all night, for a couple nights actually. And he was trying to spray paint inside, and I told him to go outside. <laughs> That's supposed to be outside. <laughs> so markers and paint <laughs> became the thing. Here we go. We need your scissors. This is experimental. I haven't, I just thought this up. Now, we're gonna make a little snake. So you need some thread. I wanna use black um, to go in between the body. I'm gonna use some regular newspaper. Um, let's make some little strips. What we're gonna do is make, I'm gonna make, try to make little, little body parts. What I wanna do is put this, make a ball, and make a little place in between there <clears throat> for the string to go into. Uh, the string is what's gonna keep them all together. You like that? Borderline genius. The string, keep that kind of in place too. I like thinking of things that may not exist, but you know what? You make them exist because you make them. And then there they are. Or tape you add a little bit of, it'll get a little smoother. So, the newspaper might not have been the best idea, but you know, we're going to go with it. So, I just want him to come across the stage like Now let's make Theodore. Take the newspaper. Do that. I want to do this kind of like a cone to where it's bigger at the bottom. I just want to make it a little shorter. Here we have a little, little cone, like a, it's almost like an ice cream cone. Let's 
Theodore fixed up a little bit in here. I wanted to find some other things to put on Theodore because he's not from the forest. He's going to explore the forest. So he's got to look different than the rest of the forest creatures. So I used a cat from a water bottle. I'm going to glue that on and see what happens there. Feel free to use different things. Um, it's fun to explore different materials. Even if they don't work out, try something new. <laughs> try something different. So I was shaping the tape a little bit in the paper to get a couple, uh, get a nose and a couple features of the face. I'm gonna let him sit for a minute. I really would like to give him arms. I'm gonna go back to the skewers. I wanna make them move a little bit. I wanna put these on just like we made the little hinges for the shadow puppets. Let's see if duct tape is work. The idea is I would like to make these move. Probably put masking tape over top of this because masking tape paints better. Let's cut out hands, all right? The funny thing about puppets is they usually only have three fingers. I wish I could tell you why. They're not human, so you get uh, three fingers. I'd use another skier, and I'm going to glue this to the top of his head. Take two pieces of string around, tight around the wrists. So we're going to take the other ends of the string. Add another skewer to the top. Let's add the other end here. You want them close to the same length. Cut your excess off. So Theodore kind of fit in there with his hands, so he can work with his hands. Yay! Yay! Oh, kind of like directing in a airplane or something. Traffic control. Don't walk. <laughs> hi, hi. I'm over here. <laughs> so you really want the arms to hang down as much as you can, but. With the tape, it doesn't allow that too much. But all right, that's Theodore. Let's make a different kind of bird. So here we have a couple little birds that are that are going to come in upstage. Not a lot of detail, not a lot of movement in them. So they're just going to be flying through. So I want to make one that flies, actually. So I'll just take a piece of paper. Um, so we have a lot of this. So I'm going to kind of roll this up. Okay, so we rolled this up and we put some tape on it, around it. So this is going to be our body. So we go with the wings. Let's take a look at some leaves here. It doesn't flap very well. I want to go back to using um, those cardboard, uh, the cardstock. Using a lot of cardstock. This is the fun part. I hope you all are doing this while this video is going and playing with different materials.
All right, we've got them all painted up and getting ready for the stage. Um, I want to show you the snake. Masking tape isn't working too good, but you know, that's all right. So remember we painted the uh, sticks black, so it will kind of disappear in there. So the snake, isn't that cool? So you can work the head. This is the Brazilian rattleless um, snake. <laughs> so here we have some birds. Remember the stick? Um, this will come in from the stage left. Okay. Then we have the flying. Louisiana catfish bird. Um, I want to make those so they can fly a little bit. Isn't that neat? What does a catfish bird sound like? I don't know. I don't know <clears throat> what a catfish sounds like. <laughs> but we can make that up. So remember, you've got to create some voices for your characters. What do they sound like? Um, now that we know it. Here. Here. So he's really neat. Over here. That's pretty tight. Right. He speaks in a different language. So we just made that up too. And you've seen these guys. Trepius, fantastic. And this one here, the tree goblin, the forest goblin. So we have him on a stick coming into the side. So you gotta look at his mouth to see how he sounds. So, something like that. And we have our little fireplace, which they're going to meet up and have a little, little bonfire. So there you go. Now, the next episode, we're going to put all this together in the theater and present Forest for the Trees. Yeah.